you can feel the energy of the metropolis. Hi there, and welcome back to Torment Tides of Numenera. We're deep in the underbelly, in the changing god's lair. Found strange machines to interact with a strange book of his, uh, his notes about the data sphere. And I really don't know what to think of it. There's one thing left in this room which we haven't looked at, which we haven't used. That is this strange installation with the cables coming to it. Let's do this. It seems to be mirrors, right? Staggering array of mirrors and lenses encircle you. Cables run from their backs to various machines scattered throughout the room. Your hands ache at the side of this sanctuary, this workshop. Your predecessor spent many hours here and your body remembers. Behind the display you hear a hinge creak. Study the lenses and mirrors. The mirrors twitch as you gaze from surface to surface. Eventually you realize why. They are tuned to your mind. You can move each one as effortlessly as your own hand. Every surface shows something else behind besides your reflection. A sliver of glass highlights a red cord around your throat. A small oval mirror lingers on a pulsing blue star beneath your forehead. The mirrors to either side of the large central mirror periodically flash purple. Tiny lenses above it all crane their necks to study you. One of them appears to be shivering. That could kill ourselves, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. What about the blue star? Small oval mirror. Let's examine that. Pulsing blue star beneath your forehead expands as you watch. Oddly enough, it feels like it belongs there, like it was waiting to be discovered. Motion draws your attention to the other two mirrors. In them you see a very different reflection of yourself. Pale clouds of blue light surround your hands. Feathery tendrils trail from every fingertip, flicking at the air. You raise your hand, your reflection does as well, and suddenly your head burns with the ache of the radiant object within it. Ah, what will look at the hands? What is there? The skin is glowing, tiny needle-like tendrils emerge from the tips of each finger, tiny tools for delicate work. What? Ah. We'll pluck out the object. What is that? A bronze sphere. It's a fist-sized bronze sphere that you remove from a trans-dimensional space inside your head. Its surface is covered in interlocking spirals. We could use it. Not yet. You press your fingertips against your forehead and feel the needle-like tendrils close around the round object inside your head. Carefully you pull it out. The rising agony melts away and the glow slowly fades from your hands, revealing a bronze sphere in your palm, growing more substantial with every passing second. That is crazy. Ah. Uh, watch for the purple glow. On the side mirrors, maybe? No, we'll study them again. Larger ones respond to the lightest touch of your mind. The smaller mirrors strain, creaking to study you. Uh, we'll watch for the purple glow. As soon as you look at the mirror to your left, a torrent of radiant light flows through you, nearly tugging you off your feet. You regain your balance just in time to see the light pass into the mirror on your right. In that mirror you see a machine aglow the same purple light you spotted before. If you allow the light to carry you, chances are that it will take you to wherever that machine is. Adventure. Let's try that out. Look at the purple glow in the side mirror again. Allow it to carry you through the opposing mirror. A flood of purple light streams from the mirror as, you s as soon as you look at it. It lifts you from your feet and carries you into the mirror onto the other side. Oh my god, we're away. 
Where are we? What is happening? That's craziness. This teleportation. Ah, uh, oh. Hi there. Uh, what are you doing here? Where are we? Mimeon, you return, revered one. How may we assist you today? Ah. <laughs> oh, I could sleep here. Farewell. Ah, getting to sleep here would be very good. But now that we're here, we could as well go to Sophie and try again. I mean, we have we have seen that portrait of the, of the sorrow, so might be that helps him. Hey there, Sophie. Uh huh. So nothing yet, nothing yet. Ah. How, why? How did that work? Can we do that again with a with a machine here? With a clock? Interact with it. The machine is solid now. Its three clock faces are fixed on a single point each. The clock's purpose is still a mystery, but you can at least interact with it. Hmm. You notice that the figures of Camus, Divityaku and Villon are no longer present in the central clock face. They only exist in your labyrinth now. We'll examine it again. Machines hums and sticks in a steady droning rhythm. It's definitely a clock of some kind, though it's not measuring time in any way that you understand. Figures that were beneath the central clock face are gone. We'll step away from it. We'll need to go back. I mean, we haven't looked at. Oh, um, but we have the. Right, we have the book now. Yes, now. We could use the book. Hmm. I, th I remember we are we are getting indigo and blue tides often, so maybe. Um, we'll just use that book and we'll touch like the indigo thorn. You tap this dense thorn, coaxing a multitude of tiny chime-like sounds from the metal. As you listen, they coalesce into a single firm note. After a moment, the music fades abruptly. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Arguria, see her as she was. You do not deserve to forget what you lost. I put the book away. Could give it back, but that would mean losing. I see blood walls on the walls. Yeah, what do you know? Everything is mad here. We need to go back. We need to try out this book with a with a holding tubes in the Sticha layer or something. I think that might have a great effect. I mean tubes meeting tubes, right? There's so much to do. What are you doing, guy? We're just hobbling around. I wanted to look at this thing too. Let's do it now. A dark sphere inhabits almost every socket in this obelisk that stretches toward the cavernous ceiling. No one else seems to be paying the old structure any attention. Like most Numenera, it's simply here, and if it can't be used, it's treated as part of the scenery. The orbs gleam in the dim light. You lean toward them. Are they glass, jewels, eyes? Hmm. hmm. So we have to try the book with a with a chime still. Pff, 
first let's examine this thing perception oh a flicker from one of the orbs above you catches your eye you look up just in time to see the image of a woman leaning toward the surface of the glass from the inside you touch the nearest sphere your finger barely grazes the glass before it displays the image of a furred creature touching the surface from the other side Purple vines threaded with veins of light hang from the branches of the trees behind it. You lift your fingertip and darkness swallows the creature. The orb is opaque once more. The orbs appear to reflect whatever action is performed in front of them. Aha. Uh -huh. We'll hum a little song. Nothing appears in any of the dark orbs. Instead the whisper of many voices joined in song curls from the obelisk so low that only you can hear it. Ha. Huh. We'll try everything out, we're a scientist. Tell the orb a secret. Your lips nearly brushing the surface, you whisper a thought you've never told anyone, a too tall, narrow-hipped being. A visitant appears in the glass, long fingers clasped. Meeting your eyes, it speaks words you cannot hear. You can, however, sense its thoughts. They tickle an odd part of your mind. Oh, is that the visitant we met above there? Dizziness overcomes you. You suddenly know that the visitant speaks stolen words and that blood was spilled to take them. Even though the cause was just... The visitant is deeply ashamed. It fades into the black of the orb, lowering its head. Ah, how fitting. Make a rude gesture. <laughs> just to try it out. Make the most obscene gesture you can think of at the glass. A young woman with rainbow pupils appears in the glass, flicking her fingertip across her chin. She nods, grinning, as if imagining you your shock at her daring. Rin says, what did that mean? What did any of that mean? We'll try an even ruder gesture at the structure. A rainbow-eyed woman rewards your gesture with one of her own. She jabs a finger at her knee, grinning at her own audacity. Feel better, dear? Callistique says, and try that again. Oh, all right. Touch the nearest sphere again. Third creature you saw before the or before touches the orb again, bewildered. We'll leave the obelisk be. Rin, maybe we have to talk to you about something. <laughs> ah, no, not really. Hmm. There's so much to do. We could... We should now, before we forget, we should go back to the Visitant. Maybe the Visitant knows something about the other Visitant. Sometimes I'm so confused, but this is the structure of this game, I feel. It is also a little bit confusing, or at least con confused in a in a way that I don't understand. There's the there's Philothis. Is I think that was a visitant, right? Was it? No, it was a Philothis. Regards you silently, implacably, still scrutinizing, still seeking. Oh, fell, farewell. So that wasn't the Wizitant. Was there a Wizitant in the... In the fifth eye? <sighs> we'll, we'll speak to that. And now, yeah, I mean, let's go. Now let's let's try out the chimes. There's just nothing else that seems good now. What we have to try, we have to try that book before we give it back. It could be important, and this could also be important. Let's move Tybeer up a level. Uh, yeah, we could increase. An ability or skill that would be nice. I mean, he has pretty good stat pool. For all his abilities, we could increase the edge, but I don't know. 
increase the stat pool's ability or skill seems good. Maybe could increase his speed. Only do this once per tier. Let's see. Uh, initiative could be good. Running, quick fingers, stealth. No, we don't want that. Um, could increase the edge. That would save us a lot. Increase the stat pools would be good too. Increase the edge with speed even more. So he would be the total speed master. We could increase the might edge a bit, so... Edge provides a bonus, yeah. I mean, he's the strongest one of us, so it makes sense to give him a might edge. Edge also reduces the activation cost, yeah, so... I think that's a solid choice. A solid choice, hopefully. Did you kill them? Let's go back with Chkekt. To the sanctuary. Go, go, go. The chimes. Interact with this thing. We'll leave it alone, but we have the book with us. Touch the indigo thorn. Tap the dense thorn. Music fades. And let's touch the blue thorn. The moment raised is a cool, complex note from the curved surface. Oh, the silver thorn. Prod the silver thorn, producing a high, pure note. The moment the music fades abruptly. A red thorn. Carefully pluck the prim crimson thorn like a stringed instrument. A note rises, a vibrating razor edge. A gold thorn. Caress the golden thorn. A warm note rises from within it, making your fingers tindle, tingle. We'll put the book away. This leads nowhere, right? Hmm. This leads nowhere still. What did we want to go? Or what did we want to do, rather? We'll have to look at all the chimes here. Of course. Open up. What's in that next thing? A glowing statue emits a low hum that tucks lightly at your mind, trying to draw your attention. Stichar cannot seem to resist it as you can. Allow me. Hmm. Allow me? Does that mean we should... Hmm. No. What is that? There's something eerie here. We'll have to look at that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Happy gaming to you. We'll look at more pipes in the next episode and at this sea of acid. I don't know what it is. Have a good time. Happy gaming to you. This is Immanuel Khan signing out. See you in the next episode.